to welcome each one of you tonight on this very special evening that uh, the Lord has given to us as we come together in a very special first Wednesday of the month of February when we also launch a special service in the evening which will be a service with intercessory prayers. In the book of Jeremiah, the Bible says that search me, and when you search me with all your heart, I'll be found of you, and I will tell you things that are unsearchable. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. This is our desire tonight, and let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that is ours to gather together tonight so that we may search you and we may look for you and we know that as your promise stands that you will be found of us. And so as we come and as we gather, as we consecrate ourselves, we pray of your blessings upon us tonight. Those of us who are here and those who are joining us online, we pray of your blessings upon these moments 
and this time as we together congregate in your name, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll continue with praise and worship. Hallelujah. Let's give a hand of praise to the Lord because he is good and his mercy is into us forever. Hallelujah.
Our God is faithful and mighty, and he remains to be holy. 
Therefore, I want to invite all of us to have a moment of repentance because as we continue with this intercessory this evening, we know that our God is holy. The Bible says in Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse number 9, if you return to the Lord, then your brothers and your children will be sworn compassion by the captors and will come back to the Israel. For the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate. He will not turn his face from you if you return to him. And therefore this evening, friends that are joining us online, and those of us that we are here present, I want to pray that we approach this holy God with a lot of uh, repentance, with a sincere heart. And we thank him because the, the epistle of John, chapter number one, uh, verse number one, verse number nine, John talks about that uh, he is faithful, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And therefore, just take a moment, wherever you are, for those that are working, if you are driving, if you are in your place of, um, uh, of convenience, wherever you are, just go before the Lord as we repent, because sometimes we hear things, at times we see things, at times we meditate on things that don't glorify his kingdom. And this evening, our God who is holy, wants us to approach him with a lot of holiness and um, with a lot of righteousness, him being the enabra. And therefore, I will request worship team uh, to be able to lead us in a background music even as you take time individually in the next two minutes to be able to repent because God is faithful. Yes, our God, we want to thank you. We want to acknowledge your power and your presence. Forgive us, our God, because your status is you are holy, you are holy, you are seated on the throne of mercy. Repent before God when you have not been able to discern his direction to you. Maybe he has been wanting to use you in a certain ministry, but you have not listened to the inner voice. Repent before God. Even as you repent, remember that he promises in Second Chronicles again 7.14 that when his people who are called by his name humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn to and our wicked ways, he will hear from heaven and forgive us and heal our land. Who knows that it is you and me when we repent that the Lord is going to heal this nation. It's also important for you to be able to repent for the distance that you might be having between you and God. He has been beckoning and calling on you. Maybe you have not been able to hear that inner voice. Yes, the Bible says that he does not slumber. He remains seated on the throne of mercy. Whenever he forgives, he forgives completely. Father, we want to thank you because you have heard our prayer. As we approach your throne of mercy this evening, Jehovah God, we thank you that you have forgiven us. And we want to thank you, Jehovah God, that we are now free to continue coming to you as our dad. As we pour our hearts to you, thank you for forgiving us this evening. This we pray in Jesus' name. We shall sit, those that are here for a moment, as we listen to the reading of the day. Then we shall continue. Praise the Lord. Our reading this evening comes from the book of Psalms, 
the book of Psalm 11. Psalm 11. That's where our reading this evening is coming from. Psalm 11. And I will read. In the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me, free like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes the sons of men. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence, his soul hates. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. Upright men will see his face. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, uh, Shem, for bringing the word, the reading of the word. I will take a few minutes just to reflect on the portion of scripture that we have read from Psalm chapter number 11. And though this is one of the readings that we have in our lectionary today for those that um, we follow uh, sometimes the lectionary. And um, it's in the even song. And here we are seeing David having a conversation with his friends. In verse number one, uh, David is challenging his friends because he knew whom his God was. And in verse one party, he is asking his friends, in the Lord I take refuge, how then can you say to me? If you have your Bible, you realize that from verses number one, part B, all the way to, chapter, uh, to verse number three, it's in opening and closing. Meaning, David was quoting the ones or the phrase that his friends had given him as instructions or advice. And David here was responding to them. And because the Lord used David then, even today, we can tell our enemies just like David. And David is asking them, how can you say this to me? that I free like a band to the mountain. And the context was because his life was threatened by Saul. And so his friends were advising him to free. They were also in verse number two, telling him, for look, the wicked bend their bows, meaning they knew that Saul had a lot of strength over David. And so they were giving advice again. If it was like today, we could be saying, maybe he has an AK-47, or he has the latest um, machine gun, or whichever it is. But during this context, they were using arrows and strings. And they continued, the friends of David continued by challenging and giving an advice to David by posing a question uh, to him that when the foundation are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? They knew that David was righteous. And they were challenging him and asking him, now that this has happened, you as a servant of the Lord, as someone who fears God, what are you going to do? Are you going to revenge? Are you going to free? Are you going maybe to Kota Are you going maybe to mobilize people for revenge? But now David now starts answering them from verses number four. In verse number four, we see David telling them, like opening their eyes and telling them, the Lord is in his holy temple. And he continued to say that the Lord is on his heavenly throne. He has observed the sons of men, his eyes examine them. And so David had the confidence with God and he is answering his people, his friends, and telling them, as much as you are telling me to free, as much as you are asking me that the foundation has been shaken, 
My God is on the throne. Meaning, if it is using the language of the young people today, it's like he was saying, my God is on 24-7. And he had the confidence with the almighty God. He had the confidence with honoring God. He had the confidence with God who is everywhere. And that is why he is saying he watches over his men. Meaning, even if I am surrounded by enemies, my God is watching. My God knows what I'm doing. And continues to say in verse number 5, The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence, his soul hates. He was speaking in the context of the enmity he had during this time with Saul and answering the friends and telling them, the Lord watches over the righteous. He knew that he was working with God and he knew that he could not free to please the friends because of Saul. And he was saying, God knows the wickedness of other people. He knows what is in Saul's heart and therefore I will not free I will not worry because my God is on the throne. My God is all knowing. My God is everywhere. And so we can borrow a leaf from David. And even this evening, as we continue with the intercessory today, we can borrow a leaf with David and know we are approaching a holy God. We are approaching a God who is all knowing. We are approaching a God who is omnipresent. That means he is in Nairobi. He is in the whole country. He is in other, uh, other continent. And we can be sure that as we approach God, as we pour ourselves to him, he already knows. And that is why the gospel talks about ask and it will be given to you. Knock and the door shall be opened. And then seek and you shall find. And therefore this evening, we can be as bold as David was by saying, my God watches over the righteous. The eyes of the Lord are on us. The ears of the Lord are attentive to us. The Bible says that he does not slumber, nor does he sleep. And therefore, just as David continued and talked about the weekend, he will lay, meaning our God is a God of justice. If there are some issues that you are going through this evening, remind God, maybe you are going to mahali. Just go before the Lord and remind him, just as David was telling his friends, you are God of justice, and I know that you live it, and I know that you shall come in handy. In verses number 7 and the last one, David was as well now putting more emphasis by saying, for the Lord is righteous, he loves justice, upright men will see his face. How I desire me and you, that we shall walk with righteousness, that we shall humble ourselves in his presence, and we shall have that confidence as David, that as we continue to approach this God, as we continue to decrease that he may increase, as we continue to walk with him, we shall see him. And we start the benefits of walking with him when we are still light here on this world. May the Lord help us and encourage us even as we continue to walk with him and even as we approach him, with intercessory this evening. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I will invite those of us that are here present to stand. And the praise and worship will give us one song. That will lead us to have that moment of thanking God. Because of various reasons that he has done to us. Remember where we are coming from as individuals. As a country. As a continent. As a world. That we have so many things to thank God for. COVID-19 has been here with us. Many people have, have passed through issues. And this evening, we have a lot to thank God for. So prepare your heart, even as we approach God, we thank Him for many things that He has done to us. Worship Him. And even for those that are watching us online, remember today we have set aside this Wednesday that we may continue to approach this holy God that David was saying, he does not slumber. He is still in heaven and also here in the world. Worship him. Oh, excellent is your name, O oh Lord. How excellent is your name, O oh Lord.
His Excellency. We want to continue thanking Him this evening. And the Bible says in Colossians 4, verse number 2, Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And therefore, beloved end of the Lord, wherever you are, and for those that are present here, take a moment just to thank God because of this Father that He has brought you. You have overcome many challenges in life. And today, be the third of February, we have a lot to tell God thank you. Thank Him because of life. Thank Him because of your family. Thank Him because He has enabled you even to be called a Christian at a time like now. Thank Him because of provision. Thank God because of the protection that He has given you. Thank God because of the strength of life that you have as an individual. Thank God because of the precious gift of salvation. Thank God because of the privilege you have to know him. And you know that whenever you call upon his name, he will hear. Thank him even because of the things that have not been realized within your timings. Because he knows when he's going to release his favor to you. Thank him because of the victory that you have achieved this far. Your children have gone to school. They have passed from one level to another. You have a shelter to thank God for. You are able to walk for those that are able to walk. You are able to sit for those that are able to sit. You are able to hear for those that are able to hear. You have a lot to thank God for. And even for the challenges that we are going through, we still thank Him because He's faithful. Because He hears our prayers. We thank Him for what He is about to do. We thank Him because of what He did yesterday. We thank Him because He's still reigning. Remember we have reflected on David who was reminding his friends that God was at heaven and also in this earth. And that is true. He is omnipresent whenever we call him. Father, we want to thank you this evening. As a people, as a church, as families that are represented here and online, that you have a God this year we have started well. And you have a God, we want to thank you because of the many things that you have done to us. We want to thank you because of the grace and the gift of salvation. We want to thank you, Jehovah God, because of your protection, your provision, your strength, our God. You have given us families that we come from. And we are associated as Africans in a certain family. We thank you, Jehovah God, because of our parents or our guardians. We thank you because of our siblings. We thank you because of the society that we live in. How wonderful you are, our God and our Father. That even when things are so tough, you still see us through. At times, we are hand hit economically. But when we turn to you, our God, you provide a way. We get a meal to eat. We get some, something to dress. We are able to talk to the people that we owe. And Jehovah God, they gives us the grace. And therefore, we have a lot to tell you thank you. This evening, we are acknowledging your power. We are acknowledging, Jehovah God, your holiness. We are acknowledging, Jehovah God, that this far we have come. It has taken your hand. And therefore, individually, corporate as a family, as a church, we are telling you, Jehovah, may you be glorified this evening. May you be worshipped this evening. We continue, Jehovah God, to decrease that we may increase in our eyes. And even that that we are desiring for you to do, we thank you in advance. Because you have a God, we know you are a creature. You understand what we need, and we know that you are doing it for us. For those who need justice, we thank you because you are giving them the justice that they need. For those that need financial breakthrough, we are thanking you because you are doing it for them. For those that need healing, we thank you because you are healing them. For those you have a God that need to uh, to have um, uh, to settle down in marriage, we thank you, Jehovah God, because you are doing it for them. And many other things that we may mention this evening, we are humbled in your presence. 
We are saying you're worthy, you're worthy. Receive all the glory and honor because you're God and you're faithful. This we pray in Jesus' name. We shall continue with praise and worship leading us. And then Reverend Lamban will lead us to pray for the families and also to pray for the church. Worship team. Macho yangu nitazame milimani msaada wangu watoka wapi bali ni watoka kwa ko Yesu Yesu wangu Yesu wangu pray for the church. Let us remember, those who can sit, please just sit. Those who are able to stand, you keep standing. As we focus on praying for the church, we are one and the church is supposed to be one. Praise the Lord. Let us pray for the church of Christ. Let us pray uh, for the church, especially St. Luke's where we are and we have a few items that we want us to focus on and more so as uh, the word of God came this this evening let us pray that we will have the benefits of walking with the Lord let us uh, uh, even recognize the benefits let the benefits be evident in our lives the benefits of walking with God. There are many, many benefits. So as individuals and as a whole church, because it's individuals that you know, make the corporate, may the Lord help us to realize and to recognize the benefits of walking with him. Let us pray that the Lord will help us to always worship him in spirit and in truth. Let us worship him in all seasons, whether things are hard, whether things are easy for us. Let us be worshipers of God and let, let us make worship our lifestyle. Let's also pray for our leaders, especially for this church. We want to pray for our vicar. He's having a very difficult time to lead a whole church like this one. It is not easy, but with uh, the spirit of God and the leadership of God, God guiding him and everyone who is, you know, uh, uh, working with him, then we will reach far. Let's also remember our departments, various departments, uh, because it is the departments that make the church. The church cannot operate minus the departments. So whichever departments that are there, the fellowships, the mother's union, come and all those departments. May the Lord help us that these departments will do their work properly and hence 
the whole church will prosper. Let's pray for our services, especially on Sundays and even the weekdays, whichever services that we hold, that the Lord will help us, that the Lord will use us, and that there will, we will impact lives. People will come here and they will change. People will come here and they will go with testimonies. Praise the Lord. Please worship him. There's this song which says, be glorified. Be glorified. Can help us. So that all of us, those who are watching and those who are here, we all go before the Lord and just uh, pray as the Lord leads you. Be glorified in our church. Let us just go before the Lord and, and just pray that the Lord may be glorified. That the Lord may be glorified not only in heaven, but even here on earth, but even in our temple, in our bodies, in our lives, in our church, that the Lord may be glorified. That whatever we do as a church may glorify the Lord. That whatever, uh, the way we conduct our worship will glorify the Lord that we will worship God in spirit and in truth. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. May the Lord uh, guide our leaders. May the Lord guide us as leaders in our various leadership positions. May the Lord uh, guide us and, and may we lead in wisdom. Let's just continue praying. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We worship you. We exalt your holy name, O oh God. We pray that God Almighty may worship you, that we may worship in spirit and in truth, O oh God. Areas that we have not done well, O oh God, we pray that you forgive us. And as a church, O oh King of glory, 
we pray that God, you may lead us. May you lead us, especially as St. Luke's, that God, we may go the right direction, the direction that you want us to take as a church. We pray that God, each and every department in this church, oh God, will be led by you. All the leaders of the various departments, King of all glory, we pray that God, you make us one. May you make us one, oh God, that Lord, each department and together all the departments will be one church. So we want to thank you, oh God. We pray that God, may you provide for us. Provide for us as individuals. Provide for us as a church, oh King of glory. Where we lack, oh God, we want to turn to you for provision because you are the great provider. Lord Almighty, we pray that you may provide for us, provide for us in our individual capacities and even as a church. We want to thank you, oh God, for our services. And Lord, as we conduct these services, that you will be present. You'll be present, oh God, in our services on Sundays, oh God Almighty, even within the Sunday school, oh God, the youth, the teens, and all other services, O oh God, even the weekday services, that God, those who will come, O oh King of glory, will not go back the same. So we give you praise, we adore you, we lift you up, O oh King of all glory. We pray that God, may you continue to raise our standards, O oh God, that we may come from one glory to the other. In areas we have been stagnant, we pray that God, you may, you, you, you may remove that stagnancy, that God Almighty, you may move we may press on and move ahead, O oh God, and the Lord Almighty, we will be overcomers. So we want to thank you and we adore you. Your, your word says that, that, that upon the rock you will build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. We pray that the gates of hell will not prevail even upon this church. Lord Almighty, we continue to ask you, O oh God, that Lord, may you take us to the place where you want us to be. Thank you, oh God, for the leadership. We want to thank you for our vicar. We want to thank you for the whole PCC, that God, the direction you want this church to take, Lord, that is where we will go. So we exalt your name and we lift you up. All the clergy that God we will uh, proclaim your word boldly and that we will do it whether it is convenient or not. And that God, at your own time, King of all glory will bring salvation upon each and every individual in this church. We exalt you and we lift you up. We want to thank you, O oh God. We want to pray right now for our families. Let's just remember our families. Let's remember our families. The family is under attack and the devil has targeted families because when the families are not well, then the church cannot be well. Hence, the nation cannot be well. So as we pray for our families, let us ask God to, uh, uh, to go with our families. The Bible says that is in Exodus 33, that if your presence does not go with us, we will not go. Let us ask God uh, that, that let his presence go with each and every family represented, especially at St. Luke's. May our families be dedicated. Let's dedicate our families to the Lord. That our families will be dedicated to serving the Lord. That families that are represented in this church will be dedicated to serving the Lord. Let us ask that the Lord will give each and every family a vision that we will not just move, but we will move towards a direction, a non-direction. May the Lord help each family. Let's operate as, as a unit. That the, each family will operate as a unit. Any division within families, we want to rebuke, we want to cancel, we want to pray that the Lord will help us, that our families will be united. The families that are broken, it is possible to come back because the Lord, the Lord is able to restore those families. So let us pray for those families for good health, especially at this time. Things are not very good. But we know that everything is possible with God, that God will give our, the families that are in this church good help. Those who are sick, we pray for healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray that God will meet the financial needs of these families, the families that are represented in this church. All financial needs will be met because he is the, all things belong to him. All things belong to him. Let's pray for our children that the children will not go haywire. The children will, will, 
will will we love the lord that our children will love the lord that the children as they come here for sunday school and those who do not come that they will come let's pray for our parents we have those who have parents at home let's pray those who have parents here let's pray for those parents please let's just take a little time to pray for our families lord we want to thank you for our families we want to give you praise we thank you, O oh God, because you have given us families and we pray that your presence may go with us in each and, within each and every family, that your presence will be evident and God, your presence will always be with us, O oh God. That God Almighty will be dedicated to serving you, that each family will be dedicated to serving you, O oh God. And as we uh, press on, that God Almighty will have a goal, each family will have a goal a goal as individual families and even a goal as a church. That God, each family will have a goal even to support this church. Lord Almighty, we pray that may you press upon each family that, that they will uh, have a goal to, uh, to support this church and to serve this church in whichever capacity. How we pray that we'll be united, that all families will be united, oh God, and that we will be one family as a church. That God, you may bless each and every family in this place, oh God, with good health. We pray that you, you bless each family with good health, with wealth, oh God. That God, each family, you will meet the financial needs because you are God. We want to thank you for our children. Lord, those children who are lost, how we pray that you bring them back. Oh God, we know that nothing is impossible with you. That those who are lost, Lord, in various uh, vices, oh God, but we know that you are able to bring them back. So we, we want to commit them unto your hands. That the children, especially who belong to this church or their parents come from this church, Lord Almighty, we pray that you bring them back, you restore them once again. Those who are in school, protect them, oh God. Uh, those who are in boarding schools, how we pray that you will protect them, you will provide for them all their needs, and that God Almighty, all our children will be well. We want to thank you for our parents. God Almighty, some uh, do not have good health. We pray that you reach out to them, that you touch them, O oh God, that you protect them even during this time, O oh God. Lord Almighty, we pray that you give our parents good health, O oh King of all glory, and that, Lord, we will hear of testimonies of what you are doing within our families. So we thank you and we worship you because we have prayed this in the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Can we all say Amen? Amen. We are inviting uh, Canon to continue with prayers. We shall continue with some song as we prepare to do the last part of our intercessions tonight. So praise and worship, just lead us.
this night as we come together as a people of God who are drawn by his spirit and also longing for his word. We want to remind us that Jesus said, come to me all of you who are tired of carrying heavy loads and I will give you rest. And so as we gather tonight, we want to bring our individual prayers to Almighty God. We want to urge each one of us to talk to God in the areas of your need, in the areas of the family, in the areas of individual spiritual life, in the areas of your relationships and friendships, in, re in relation to your work, in relation to business, whatever it is that you would want the Lord to undertake for you, we want to ask of you at this point to bring the same to God as we have the background music. Please call on God and talk to him just before we do corporate prayers. Thank you, Jehovah God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We exalt you because you're the great I am. You who invited those who are tired and are heavily laden to come to you. Tonight, we are heeding that call as individuals and persons who are gathered here and those who are watching us online and even for others who may have told us that we remember them in our prayers want to pray especially to thank you for daily provisions in the lives of your people that each one of us has received abundantly from you. We have not lacked, but we have trusted in you and you have given to us our daily provisions. We pray for those who today are crying out because they may have lost their livelihoods. Some may also have lost their income. Some may have lost their jobs. Some may have lost their businesses. But God, because you are the great I am. You who promised to bless the work of the hands of your people who want to pray tonight that you will remember such who are crying out to you so that they may become self-sufficient once again. We also want to pray for those who spiritually are feeling inadequate in their lives. We know that by you sending the Holy Spirit to them, you shall inspire them, you shall cause them to rise from the situations that they could be in at this hour and at this moment. Those who are feeling burdened because they may have done something that is sinful and wicked and so they are feeling they need a pardon and a forgiveness. You are a merciful God. We pray that you remember mercy upon their lives. We also want to pray for those who this night are seeking to find direction because you are a God of wisdom. You are a God who gives direction. We want to pray that by your Holy Spirit you will grant such who are seeking guidance from above, that, Lord, you will open a way for them and that you will give them that guidance. You will grant wisdom to those who are looking for wisdom, for those who are looking for their lives to be guided by your Holy Spirit, that, Lord, you will honor their prayers tonight. There are those who are crying out because there are problems in their relationships, in their friendships, and also even in the families. We know that we have cried out because of our families, but there could be individual situations that need your intervention, almighty God. We want to pray that you will hear the cry of such individuals and that you will meet such at this very point of need in their lives tonight. We also want to remember individuals who today are not feeling well, those who may be at home, those who may be in hospitals, those who have said, remember me in, in your prayers. We remember Matthew, we also remember Mze Joffrey, and we also remember Fabian and others who tonight are also mourning their dear ones. We pray that God Almighty, that you will remember mercy upon their lives. You give them strength 
spiritual and physical. We also pray that you remember the children in our families who may also be going through challenges as they readjust themselves to go back to school. As we remember these individuals together with many others who are crying out to you that, Lord, you may touch them physically, you may touch them psychologically, you may touch them mentally, you may touch them in their hearts that they may be able to receive strength to be able to cope with situations in their lives. How I pray, Almighty God, that you will honor their cries tonight. Father, I also pray that even as we, as your people gather here in this church, we remember the people in our nation. This country needs you. We are entered into a very difficult season where the temperatures of politics are starting to rise and people are starting to take positions. Almighty God, we are starting to see divisions. We are starting to see public fights. How we pray that you remember mercy upon us as a nation, the nation of Kenya. We remember our leaders. We remember the president. We remember his deputy. We remember other leaders of political parties and those, those who at this point in time are seeking to find leadership places. How I pray, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, you remember mercy upon this country. You remember mercy upon the leadership of this nation. You grant them your wisdom and direction so that they may lead this country in peace. We pray for our communities that they will live in harmony. They will live in peace. They will look at each other as brothers and sisters, neighbors and people who need to support one another rather than fight one another. Remember your mercy and have grace that is so sufficient for all of us as a people and as a nation and as a community. We bless your name tonight for that you will hear the cries of your people for that is your promise. We give you honor, we give you praise, and we worship you. We thank you, thank you, Jesus. 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 We thank you, thank you, Jesus, in our hearts. Asante sana, Yesu. Asante sana, Yesu. Asante sana, Yesu. to end the session of prayer by inviting you to stand, those of you who are in the congregation, those of you who are online with us, we also want to invite you to be party to this, and in case there is an area of need which we may not have mentioned, we want to take a moment that we may be able to bring it to God, and as you do so, we shall have faith and trust that our God will be able to meet you at that very point of need. Take a moment and let us talk to God just before we close. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we as your people unitedly together, we come to you trusting and believing that you hear every prayer that is made. You have invited us to seek you and to seek you with all our hearts and when we do so, we shall truly find you. We not only want to find you, but we also want to find solace and comfort and peace in the lives 
that we live here on earth. We pray that as you go with us in every situation, as you strengthen us and as you inspire us in our walk with you, we pray for these areas of need that may have been mentioned by these, my brothers and my sisters, and those others who are online at this hour. How we pray that as you listen to their prayer, as you hear their call, may they go out today knowing that, Lord, you have heard us and that you will meet all of us at the very points of need. We are asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. And our beloved of God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May our Lord look upon you kindly and give you of his peace and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, remain with you, and all your loved ones this day and forevermore. Amen. As we sing, we shall, uh, I'm being reminded that uh, we did not take uh, our giving tonight. We shall so do just now, and then we shall come to the end of the service. Thank you, each one of you, for coming. Those of you who are online, you can use the pay bill number, and those of you who are here, you can also use the same, or you can drop it at the front. Shukuru Asante Father and our God, once more we want to thank you because of your servants who Jehovah God have set aside some of the resources that you have blessed them with to be able to bring to your sanctuary and even to send electronically so that it will be used in this great parish and even beyond. We pray that you may bless the work of their hands and continue to expand their territories. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. We have come to the end of this service. See you on Sunday. God willing, the pastoral team continues to be um, a rat. In case of anything, reach out to us, and even the fellowship leaders, let us know.